Do you know what I heard? Um, um, Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Mm -hmm. She had a tent on stage, and there was a table of cocaine on it. Oh. Inside, inside the tent? tent. Inside the tent. Okay. Uh, because she had a drug problem, right? Like yeah. after. Uh -huh. Apparently, there was a tent of cocaine in it, and oh. she would yeah, she'd do the show. <laughs> and did the thunder only happen when it's raining? <laughs> I don't know. When I heard that, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And you're... Yeah, and you're you so did she, did she do lies or did she Tony Montoya the whole thing? Right? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah. well, then, like, it was on I, a big I, I wonder why we don't have mirror, a tent here. A, a Jack Daniels mirror. You know how expensive uh, cocaine is? Okay, you I'll can bring, only afford confectioner sugar. I'll, I'll bring the tent next time. <laughs> yeah. So you The tent is not the point. <laughs> no, no, I got tents. Don't worry. Oh, you got tents? <laughs> no, leave the tarps at home. We'll bring tents. Oh, mm. my God. Mm. All right. Thank well, you. Let's kick it off. That was a good cold open. Welcome to the Crew Roundtable Podcast. Featuring Big V, Marco, Gino and JR with your host, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. Visit us at crewroundtable.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Crew Roundtable brought to you by crewroundtable.com and the five people that bring it to you. Let me introduce everyone here around the table, starting on my left. Big V, welcome. Giggity giggity goo. Okay, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, welcome. Good to be back. Nice to see Big V back. Oh yeah, we missed him. Yeah, we missed him. He got the the big elbow. <laughs> you'll you'll hear it. The macho elbow. The macho elbow. We we touched upon some rust. Oh yeah. <laughs> macho man red <right> savage. <laughs> Gino, welcome. Thank you very much, Champ, once again, for having us here in your beautiful home. We are going to do a show tonight that uh, I think is going to be politically charged in every single aspect. Uh, I, I cannot wait to get into it. I'm seeing sparks already. It's starting. And these are bigger sparks than what Big V sees on the subway. <laughs> JR. Thank you for welcoming us, welcome us into your home again, Champ. This is, uh, this is a really good topic. Uh, and I'm looking forward to discussing it. Right. So uh, this week, we're going to be talking about Black Lives Matter and the exclusion mm -hmm. of the Toronto Police Services at the Pride Parade. Yes. Great. So, JR, uh, kick it off. All right. I, I just wanted to preface this uh, episode for our listeners. Uh, we are five white, uh, straight men. Mm -hmm. um, that gives us a, un a lack of perspective on this. Uh, it gives a perspective, but not not a very good perspective on the pro on the on the on the issues between uh, the gay po the homosexual population and and the and the and and the, the color uh, the black population uh, with 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 the with the police department. Uh, so hopefully, this episode doesn't come off as uh, white splaining. Or straight splaining, um, it's definitely not our intent. If anything, we're probably more directing it towards the white straight community who don't really have equally don't have much of a perspective on this. So we've we've a lot of our opinion, a lot of our information is done th from research. Uh, I don't think a lot of it's personal experience. Mm. Uh, there might be a little bit of an opinion, but I'm hoping it's going to be an informed opinion. Um, and again, we're 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 not trying to invalidate any anyone's uh, any 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 of the groups' experiences with the po Toronto police or, or any police with in the, for that matter. So, uh, just wanted to put that out there. We're, okay. We're, we're, we're yeah. It's, it's not we're not telling black or gay people or black gay people how they sh how things really are. Oh, exactly. And, and exactly. that their experiences are invalid. We're, we're, so. Try to try. Hopefully, that 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 comes through, and that or that doesn't come through, and uh, the case may be. Got it. Uh, Gino, would you like to get us started? Thank you very much, Jr. And l let me say that at the beginning, um, that was a wonderful, impassioned speech that you gave. Uh, for myself, I'm definitely trying to invalidate some people's opinions because some people's opinions are not based on truth, and we'll see that as we go through our discussion here today. Um, the 
way that I was going to introduce this uh, is uh, speaking primarily about Black Lives Matter Toronto. Uh, Black Lives Matter Toronto is different from Black Lives Matter. <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, I wanted to know if there was any association between the two. There is, and we'll get to that. Um, <coughs> as it relates to our main topic, uh, the touchstone of the police being excluded from the Pride Parade, um, the history behind that is that at the last Pride Parade in 2016, Black Lives Matter had a sit-in along the route of the parade. There were roughly about two dozen members of Black Lives Matters Toronto's, or BLMTO, they blocked the Pride Parade, <coughs> and they blocked it over the involvement of uniformed police in the Pride Parade of 2016. They held up the parade until the police withdrew. No, no, they, they held up, up the parade until the head the of head came Pride down, signed, signed some signed. commitment that they would, the remo- they would remove them from the parade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that's what happened. Uh, so, uh, you know, splitting, splitting hairs, but they wanted the police out and they got them out in 2016. Now, in 2017, a motion was passed by the Pride Toronto Annual General Meeting to ban official Toronto police involvement in all future Pride parades, saying that it would create an unsafe space at the parade for marginalized communities. That's where we are and what got us to this point today. Who wants to start unpacking this? Um, I'll, I'll start a little bit. Um, actually, hold on. There's actually one more thing, which is recent. Uh, one of the councillors in the city of Toronto uh, has brought up uh, the possibility of excluding uh, um, any funds towards uh, gay the gay parade because of this exclusion of the police. Uh, because if if anybody can now start excluding anybody for whatever reasons. It's not leaving it as an open uh, uh, opportunity, an open um, door for for everybody to to be included within uh, these special occasions or these events, and they're thinking of basically taking away funding from the the gay pride parade because of, because of the exclusion of the police. Jr. Sorry, okay. so, I, 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 I'm going to follow up with that that comment. No, no, no. But I've got some more information on that, just in terms of okay. numbers. I okay. want to put that on, and then you can speak to it. Okay, go for it. Okay? Go for it. Um, so let's let's also talk about and let's also define our terms a little bit. Let's talk about what is Pride Toronto. Okay. okay. So Pride Toronto is a nonprofit organization, and it's one of the largest pride parades in the world. Yeah, I think it, no, it's third. the second. It's the second, second yeah. to San Francisco. Second to San Francisco. Well, okay, yeah. well, okay, one of. One of. There's millions, millions of people coming, right? It's the same. Yeah, but it's the second well, largest. Only one of the people. So one of the people that beats okay. it. Mm. So it began primarily as a male gay assertion of presence. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, now it's become a beacon for inclusivity, uh, and it's meant to celebrate diversity in all its forms. I don't yes. know. Do they still do? They still do a separate dyke march. I think they still do. They still do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and it is quite a relevant topic that it started with primarily male parade mm-hmm. because Black Lives Matter is tied intrinsically to the plight of women. So this started primarily as a male gay presence. I, I, I disagree with that on the Black Lives Matter. I, do you know the history of Black Lives Matter? I've been, I, I, I know, in, I know in, the, in, 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 in recent history, it's primarily, it, it's come to light a lot more. Do since, you know who since founded the, Black Lives Matter? No, I do not. Do you know who the chief of Black Lives Matter Toronto is? No. Okay, we'll get to that. So, back to Pride. Um, now, as Big V was saying, it does receive heavy funding from the city. So, the Pride, as an event, gets about anywhere from two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 from the city of Toronto. Yes. But that's not their only source of funding. So even if Toronto pulls their funding, Pride has become a corporate event. Mm-hmm. There is okay. big money from big companies. Mm-hmm. In 2015, they got over $2 million in donations from huge companies. Unbelievable. Okay. So the money that Toronto City proper is willing to pull from the parade may not be that big of a deal to Pride. But I can see where they're coming from. That it's still a significant chunk of change. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, technically, it could be it's one-eighth. Of their, fun, of their funding. Well, but that's one-eighth as of $215, right? Who knows how much corporate money gets flooding into it day, year after year after year, right? Uh, it was one-eighth at that point. All right, go, go on with your list because I want to get to my point after uh, that. So that's, uh, I just wanted to throw some numbers on there. Um, the Pride Parade, is it a protest? Is it a celebration? Can it be both? 
Jr. Take us into it. Okay, uh, pri- okay. The pride, as you, you're right. It's it, it's a celebration. It's it's a celebration of of, of existence, and and to the kind of, to the people who say why 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 don't we have a straight parade? Because straight people have never been persecuted. But who's, You've who's never, wait, wait, no, but who no, said no. that? No one said that at the table yet. I no, think no, you're, we, I think you're the, jumping the gun a bit. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's backtrack to uh, to Big V's point with this counselor who who is now saying who wants that, to pull oh, the funds. Who wants to pull the funds? Yeah. I hate fucking counselors who stand on points knowing that they're not going to win. Pride brings in a lot of money to Toronto. People mm-hmm. fly in. Mm-hmm. Huge corporate. They, well, even outside the corporation, people fly in. Gay people fly in to Toronto. They stay in rest. They eat in restaurants in Toronto. They, they, they rent hotels. That brings in big money. Now, yes, the city does not get any direct revenue from that. Because there's no, they, they don't collect the sales tax or anything. They may collect a little bit from the hotels. But, they don't, but the thing is, they help Pride because it benefits the city. Even though it doesn't benefit the municipal government directly, the whole point is to... Benefit its citizens. It's not so, just not just gay too. Like straight people. Come straight in, people like too, but I imagine it's a lot of gay people. So, um, so they, they know that this counselors like this know that nobody's going to vote against this pride parade because just financially it's political suicide. Even forget about the bigotry to defund one of the biggest events the city holds. And in some way, want it to not happen. You're basically telling everybody who profits from this, I don't want you to make money from this. I'd rather you not be success, financially successful so as I can stand on principle. So they take up this minority, unpopular opinion just so they can, yeah, I'm sticking it to the gay people, knowing they're not going to win because secretly they want the pride to still go because they want the money to flow into Toronto. Uh, Ford was exactly the same way, and and, and Mamaliti voted the same way like, two or three years ago. To de- but they voted to defund all the parades. Mm. They, they didn't want to spend any money on the parades, it, regardless of the fact that people actually come in and spend a lot of money on those. Um, Wait, on so some you're of those talking parades. like Easter, Christmas, or Santa Claus? Yes, they didn't want. They didn't want. They didn't want to give money to any parade whatsoever. Yeah, like, Carabana. Yeah. yeah, because they were all they, they were running on this bullshit gravy, gravy train thing where the government shouldn't be sponsoring all this stuff, despite the fact that they were, this wasn't charity events. These, these, like maybe the, the, the Santa Claus parade doesn't bring in foreign visitors and stuff like that, but you know, some of these other, Carabana brings in lots of foreign visitors. Tons of foreign visitors. Is lots still, of people it, fly in from the Caribbean. Is it still even called Carabana? No, it's called something else. It, it keeps changing. It keeps changing, right? Because yeah. they get a different sponsor all the time, right? Something like that. I, I don't know the inner working. Someone, they, they keep, it keeps changing uh, cha- changing groups. But it's to, basically like a West Indies It's a Yeah, festival, it's, a, it's right? a South, South, a Southwest, it's a West Asian, uh, a West, uh, West Indian. Uh, Another uh, non-white festival. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a festival celebrating people of color. But people fly in for this. Stay here, spend money, and then fly home. So the, it brings in outside money. It doesn't just recirculate money from people who already live here. Okay, so why do you think this counselor is... He's this? making a political point. He's clearly conservative. He clearly is homophobic. This hasn't... His stance... His stance... His stance... I will get no it to, uh, hey, I'm talking. Hold on. No, you have your floor. You I made an assumption. I, I will make the assumption. You, you shut up until, I stop, until I'm done. Wait a second. Do we know the name of the counselor? Who did this? Uh, off the top of my head, and I don't remember. And we don't even know that right. he's homophobic. You just can't come well, out and say on, that. He may have just made an okay, point. Okay, guys. He, yeah, his, we, I, we're going from, his, from the way he talks about his excuse, goes touches back to our last episode, where he's not saying he wants to stop pride because he's gay, against gay people. He's, oh, they're excluding someone, so let's burn the whole thing to the fucking ground. It's, it's, it's typical tap- tactics of other people who've tried to defund the pride parade for, okay. for but he's doing it, but he knows he's not going to win he's doing it as political posturing so he can reach out to his conservative constituents knowing full well it's not going to defy it's not going to it's not going to win so he's playing a safe bet just so he can uh, shoot his mouth off that's what's going on here are you more I in see. favor of someone like 
former Mayor Ford, who just came out and said, I'm not going because I don't agree. I don't approve of that. But you can respect no, he, that decision. He never said that, though. He was never for it. He said he never went because he had to spend time with his family. He also sugarcoated it. So he never, I thought he came out and said he just never, didn't, he never no, approved. No, he, no, he's made homophobic jokes. Yeah, yeah. He's made negative uh, 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 homophobic comments. He's never said, I'm not going because I don't want to go. Gentlemen, he said, please, I'm please. Got, no, on topic. I'm, I've, I'm spending time with my family. Black Lives Matter and Toronto Sorry. Police. Please, please. I have not heard those two words so, yet. All right, so going back to the, this thing, a lot of people have complained that a lot of the, a lot of the, the, fi- the blowback to Black Lives Matter is like, why did they ruin our fun? Why did they get in the way of our parade where everyone was having a good time just to push their political agenda? Wait, wait, who's saying that? Every, that was the primary, that was one of the, the, the primary uh, criticisms of the protest. Leveled by who? I don't know who. Uh, the, 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 uh, amongst the comment, the, the negative comment, criticism that it received. In, in in the newspaper was that from the gay community who said uh, no they're across ruining our it, fun? V- v- various people so gay straight the whole spectrum yes. said they're ruining the fun yes of the they, parade. They, they ruined the fun they they hold, they held the parade hostage this that and the other thing protests are not supposed to be convenient if you can ignore a protest it's not working all right so this wasn't a stat this is a, a point to gain uh, attention. And that's what a protest is supposed to do. All right? And I, I, so I, as, as inconvenient as it was, that was the point. If they were, what if they walked down the street after they cleaned up the parade? Did fucking anybody going to pay attention to that? No. It would have been a worthless gesture. This, you, sometimes you have to do stuff to get but why don't attention. They, why don't they have their own parade? Or why don't they have their own protest? Well, they did. This was their protest. Yeah, but they did this by holding somebody else hostage in order to get their point across. That's are, you, not... are you deaf? Did you not hear what I just said? <laughs> let's not, if a, if let's the not protest is convenient, uh, it's, no, not no, a, it's not no, no. a Regardless protest. Regardless of convenience or not, it was not right of them to put a specific gentleman who's in charge of the parade, the people within it, how it is organized, and how it ends up occurring that day in the aftermath, to come down... Hold him hostage with respects to the point of having to sign something he may never have wanted to even read. By never mind, he, put, a, put his you pen mean to the it. Chief of the Pride. Yes. Mm-hmm. That, the gentleman, yes. Okay, because I think we're using way too many pronouns on this show by saying they, them, her, politicians, the, Toronto, sorry, the, the gentleman who was in charge of the, pri- of the Pride, the president of the Pride Parade, let's try and use some proper was pronouns. forced to come down in order for the parade to continue for. For the people that he was in charge of, this event that he was in charge of, and for the day to continue that they worked year-round to get ready and to, to, to host, he had to come down and he had to put pen to paper. Do we know he wanted to do it? He probably didn't. He re- but he probably did it anyways because he, he didn't want everything to go to shits. He resigned after. Exactly. He so left. that means that he, means the, he, he did something. Ran back to Quebec. He did something he didn't want to do, but he didn't want to screw everybody else over. So he did it anyways. So was that justified? Was it? Was it that, was, on, that, that was that not holding him and the parade hostage until they gave up something? That they didn't have to give up in the first place? Something that they earned over decades? Well, okay, first was, of all, was it right? From their from their point of view, it no, was no, right. And no, it was justified. who cares about their point it's of view? Not, it's, it's We're not talking about the not, guys that got screwed over. Nobody got screwed and, over. And, oh no, no. No, he they, signed. He signed a non-binding paper because the decision was not made from that incident. Oh, so, so it brought so, it to the so table, but it was voted. If they had on. the police again, the next following year, even after he signed that paper, you think it was the same thing was going to happen again? We'll go through the decision making process we'll, because we'll that's that. we're gonna go through that. We're gonna go through that at the end. I, I'm just I see I, your point. I'm though. just saying I want to know even if like you're saying it, it, it isn't convenient to go out and and make a point. My point is, was it right of them to in to to force such a level of adjustment against others who for decades had to deal with the same thing that they supposedly are going through? The protests are inconvenient. Just like the black protest 
uh, following Rosa Parks being kicked off, being forced to move to the back of the bus. So you're saying it's cool to inconvenient others who had been inconvenient already for decades. In this case, that was just a coincidence. I want to speak. I want to speak to that point because the union that you work for does a fantastic job of inconveniencing the public every time they go on strike. Thank you. That's an so excellent you should, point. You should be careful we what you say. We can't go on strike anymore. Not by your own decision. You, you should be careful what you say on this point. How? I, I, we can't you dis- hold the... Si- we can't you, disrupt the uh, service anymore. Only because, because you're not be permitted to. It was made illegal. Not through your own decision. The union didn't vote to say we're not going to vote on go on strike anymore. Okay. For ye- decades, the TTC kept the yeah, city hostage. Birth. Before my birth, so you still uh, not, work for them. Not, not before your. Birth. No, 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 no. I don't work for a union. I work for TTC. Excuse me. Not before your birth. You belong I, to the union. I went through two strikes when I was a student at York University. Yes, and, and that, I saw buses on and one the through, picket line, and, and one and in is, high school, and that is one in high school. Of the one workers. in high school. Now, at the time in high school, I didn't give a shit because my dad was off, and he said, "Fuck you" to the strikers, and he just ended to drive me back and forth to work every day. And there did, and there did, so and, and there was that one semi-illegal walkout. The one day the Wild, the six the one hours, day, seven yeah, hours, the wildcat, a six, whatever. seven hours, the right time. That I still have to go back to work out in the city. But minus a hundred points for big Actually, V. I, no, 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 don't minus J. I didn't bring this up. Budget. We have to get back I, on topic I here. To, I stuck okay. to the back on topic. topic. Okay, back, back, back on topic. topic. Yeah, I want my hundred points back. Can you give us a little more background on Black Lives Matter, just so we get some perspective here? Okay, you've got five minutes, and then we got move on. All right. So Black Lives Matter. So Black Lives Matter, Toronto is affiliated with Black Lives Matter. And how, where did Black Lives Matter come from? So again, it's something that happened in the U.S. and it's mm-hmm. bleeding into our country, just mm-hmm. like Trump and all that other ridiculousness, okay? Which we discussed on our last show where we are doing celebrity politicians. So, or maybe the next show, depending on how we choose to release, uh, whatever, the, whatever tickles the champ's fancy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, okay, so Black Lives Matter started in 2012 mm. by three women. After a black man was killed by a white man, and the white man was set free. Mm-hmm. The white man mm-hmm. was a neighborhood watch captain, and the black man was a 17-year-old kid in a hoodie. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh. The white man claimed self-defense, and there were no witnesses. That was George, uh, wasn't that George Zimmerman? Uh, George uh, Zimmerman and uh, the kid was Martin Traven. Okay, so uh, we're not going to discuss the merits of that case. Mm, okay. But that is the action that spurned the reaction and the genesis of Black Lives Matter chapters in cities across North America. Now, from their website, Black Lives Matter is fighting for what it views as the systematic oppression of black people specifically within the context of North American political and historical uh, events. From their website, Black Lives Matters is not to be adopted to the hashtag all lives matter. Mm-hmm. They don't care about other lives. I no, don't, I disagree with that uh, statement. Hold on. I disagree with that ben, statement. Uh, this is from their website. It's not my statement. This is Black Lives Matter statement. They do not want it co-opted to all lives matter or that's brown fine. lives that, matter. That's fine. That's okay? fine. Black okay. lives okay. matter is a movement against white supremacy. Right? Yes. Okay. I would agree with that. It is an organ it, it is an organization which is unapologetically black for black self determination with a political intervention strategy that places black lives first among equals. That is Black Lives Matter. Okay. Now we move on to Black Lives Matter Toronto. So Black Lives Matter Toronto is a chapter. Very similar early history, very similar genesis. It was founded in uh, 2014 by two ladies, Janea Khan and Ursa Kogali, following the killing of a black man shot in a car by police during a routine traffic stop in Brampton, Ontario. All right? Unfortunately, the thing for which they are most famous is a, is a recording. And you can see this on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook. All you have to do is go out and search for it. One of the founders where they referenced a uh, statement made by Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister of Canada, saying that he would take in all the refugees that Donald Trump doesn't want. And as the crowd started to applaud that statement, the founder of Black Lives Matter Toronto said, don't applaud that statement. Uh, She continued by saying that that is part of the white man holding down people of color and called Justin Trudeau 
a liar, a hypocrite, and a white supremacist terrorist. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Why did he get called these names? Now, these are the people who are leading the movement. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's a little bit of context on what we're mm-hmm. dealing with when it comes to Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter Toronto. So it's not like Black Lives Matter in the U.S. is sending edicts out to everyone. These are individual chapters that are run their own way. But the way that they're run, and this particular instance with the police, <clears throat> there is a history behind that. There is a context behind that. And the relationships, at least in the U.S., between the police and between, uh, and between black people in the U.S. is not a rosy picture, right? There is a, there is a history there of institutional violence against black people. It, it, the, the history is in Toronto the, as well. Now, the history in Toronto as it relates to the Pride Parade, it wasn't that long ago when police were raiding gay bathhouses. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, exactly. The, 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 it, was not that, it was not that long ago when... The ad when there was an adversarial relationship between the gay and again primarily so male homosexual population in Toronto, mm-hmm. we're we're kind of ignoring the lesbian only aspect of this, but I mean you know they have their own dyke march, so I mean, we're dealing with what we got right. But there was an adversarial relationship between the gay male population of Toronto and the Toronto police, and the police were co opted into the Pride Parade. The gay people won that battle. They won. I, I have my theories on that, on why that, how that happened. What theories? Well, this is just from my personal experience. I've gone to three pride parades. From my, from my, from my viewpoint, pride is very white. It's not hundred percent. What do you mean by gone? Like, have you actually been in the parade? Have you been squirting water guns? Have uh, you once been... I did. Uh, okay, and so twice t- I've tell atten- us. So tell and us a little bit about And that. twice I've attended it. And just, just as a rough summary, and this is not mathematical, it borders on anecdata, I, I, I will admit. If it borders, from, it is. Yeah, it probably is. But from, <laughs> from, my, from my point of view, if I'm going down there, a lar- well over 50%, probably bordering on 70 plus percent of the people there are white. All right? In the parade? Or in both. everywhere, just everywhere, the parade, whole, uh, spectators, participants, everyone. The spe- the, par- the parade particularly is is heavily white. Okay, uh, and a lot of the spectators, I would say, the spectators are a little bit more mixed, but I, I think still it leads leans to white. You know, more than the general population. I would say so. Yeah. Well, sure. Yes. It, well, I don't know what the general population. I didn't do a, I didn't do a numbers calculation, but it it's it's really white. It's very white. Because Toronto is more diverse than most cities. And, and diversity seems to be a little bit less dro- more dropped when, I, when I'm there, just from the attendance and thing. And just from what I've learned on various podcasts, uh, sex positive podcasts, uh, with, who've interviewed you know, gay, uh, people, uh, gay people of color, it's very difficult for black men to come out as gay. You know, it's still even more stigmatized. Uh, than, uh, than, any, than, than in, than it's well more stigmatized than it is in, in, in the white community. You know, the, the, the face of homosexuality is pretty much white. And I think that's partly what, what's helped the, the, the gay pride to forge an alliance with the cops, whereas the cops still have a very antagonistic uh, relationship with, with the black community in Toronto and, and, and all over North America. I mean, there's racial profiling, uh, simple traffic stops that end up and end in violence. Now, we don't know what happened there, but it, it's it happens so frequently that it's it's all it, it's it's not a, it, it can't be a coincidence that oh my goodness every time they pull over some it must have it must have been the black guy's fault. They don't think it's always the victim's fault. Um, I, I, it kind of harkens back to a very popular skit that that Chris Rock did on one of his TV shows, like how not to get your ass beat by police. And it makes light. It really makes light and it puts a lot of blame. And I, it was funny when I first saw it, but the more I've, I've learned, uh, the more I've experienced, more, more I've learned about this scenario. It does put a lot of blame on the victim that, that, uh, that, that skit. And there's no way a white person would have been able, would have been able to make light of that scenario. And I think it was a little tasteless for him to make light of that scenario as well. Where a lot of us tell uh, don't 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 speed, 
Uh, don't drive with a, a crazy friend. Don't drive with a, a, a mad woman. And, 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 and drive with a white friend. You know, we're, we're, we're the four, with the four tops. It was kind of funny, but it's like, yeah, you know what? The black, the innocent black driver should not be, have to fear for his or her life at, his, at, a, at a routine traffic stop. And, and, you know, not too long ago, driving while black was a big euphemism for being pulled over. DWBs is a euphemism for being pulled over when a black person is driving a car in an, in an area, in a neighborhood that is supposedly too affluent for him to belong to. What, what point were you trying to make when you were stating that you feel it's harder for a black person to come out as gay? How does that relate to this issue? Um, that, that's partially, I think, partly why the gay community is more white. than The, 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 it, it's, the diversity, I, I feel, is a little more skewed uh, of, of the people who are out. Are, are skewed is skewed in favor of white people because I think white people having the privileged position also had a slightly easier slightly easier time coming out than people of color. But does that factor into the discussion of why Black Lives Matter asked the police not be involved in the parade? Uh, no, that, that I'm getting to that. Okay, I'm getting ahead. to that. Sorry, so that's why. I think that helps. Two, that helps explain why the police became part of the parade. Yeah, exactly. That that helps why explain they were why in the parade. two two, Just to begin two with, groups right? which were at one point equally persecuted by police, where one has made leaps and bounds in terms of improvements. Not perfect. It's still not perfect. Black gay people are still targeted. Uh, shortly after the big vote, I think there was a very uh, there was a video. Uh, release where like a couple of Toronto cops were arresting a guy and it was a particularly violent uh, altercation and one of the cops exclaimed don't let him spit on you you'll catch he'll give you AIDS mm-hmm. that was undoubtedly a homophobic slur because because unfortunately AIDS is still highly associated with being gay uh, being a gay male being a gay male is still stigmatized with, uh, with, 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 with AIDS so it almost justified the decision re- retrospective, re- retroactively. And it's like the police are all butthurt and this is what a Toronto cop is caught on camera saying in the middle of official police business. Do you know if the guy actually had AIDS? Was he HIV positive? That's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Not really because if he was known to have HIV... Well, first of all, saliva is I not... I know, saliva is not, not going to give it to you. That's not, that's not the point. That's not the point. You're not, you're, when you're arresting someone, you're not, you're not mocking them. You're, 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 you're supposed to be subduing them and arresting them. You know, and, if that's all, and that's only what we've heard from one video. So, what, so to say that uh, Pride's problems with the cops is gone is, is, is a farce. And they, they've made more progress than people of color. And, you know, I guess so is that black li- person- and Black Lives Matter, Black Lives' point is if they're not going to treat everyone equal uh, with respect, then they shouldn't be in, uh, uh, associated with the parade, which celebrates, you know, treating everyone equally. Because okay. the cops okay. have clearly not done that. But does, so is that one police officer on the tape saying that, if that person is standing in for the entire Toronto police force... Are they not canceled out by the many Toronto police who are in the parade, participating in the parade? If we're going to judge one person as the exemplar for the entire group, don't you have to turn around and look at the other side too and say, all those police who are marching in uniform in the parade together, don't they shed a positive light on the police force then? You can't pick and choose one and then ignore the other. Um, you can because... Uh, no, well, you, no, no. Yes, you can. No, you yes, can. you can. How? Because it goes the old adage: one bad apple spoils the bunch. It's not that the, uh, one small group's purity. You can't be over kind to everyone, but you have. You can be. You you, you can have uh, too much. There is uh, too much cruelty. I don't know. I think you're yeah. reaching. No, on that you're reaching you, on that one. This is this is a group of people who have a high amount of power. Who? Who's the, co- the police officers? Police, police yes. officers carry an unbelievable amount of power. No argument. There. Okay, 
And to, uh, unfortunately, quote Spider, with great power comes great responsibility. No, don't, don't, don't quote Spider. No, that, uh, no, it does. That makes it, that it, makes it, no sense. With because that kind of power, a hurricane has great power, but it has no responsibility. It, a hurricane okay? is not sentient. Don't be an idiot. Sentient. Now you're talking like Star Trek. Use real words. I understand what you're saying. There's moral agency involved. Yes, if you have the power, the the, the amount of power a police officer carries, they have to be unbiased. It has to be carried out in an unbiased manner. Yes. Uh, well, and, Otherwise, and they are not and meeting out justice. Mm-hmm. There I, is no justice as a travesty. I, I think that's least, asking too much. At the very least, of it's, police. Wait, wait. At the very least, I think it has to at least give the appearance of unbiased because people will have their biases, but they have to execute their office in the most fair and just you, way. You possible. have to fight the. You have to fight you the biases. You have to fight it. Yes, you do. Right, and that's and that's why. Uh, and you know, yes, you have good cops. I'm not. I'm not painting or uh, swiping all about all, all, all cops are bad. But what level of biased cops is acceptable? In my opinion, none. Do we know what level of biased cops we have right now? In reality, it's not zero. Not zero. It's not zero. But, and and but do I don't we know what it I, is. I do not think it's 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 ridiculous to think zero is the more is the acceptable target. Zero is the ultimate target. I don't think you're ever going to hit it. It's not a bad, re- it's, it's, but it's a proper target. It's, it's a target we should be striving for. So I, I, I'm going to have to uh, kind of side with Black Lives Matter. They're not, they don't, they don't feel safe around police for good reason. There are, ever, ever since Obama was elected, there has been, they, they have been shedding, and, and especially after the Trayvon Martin case, there have been lots of cases where a simple traffic stop escalated to, to fatality. Mm-hmm. And not that they were even actually violent offenders. Wait, you said since Obama was elected? I, I've seen it a lot more. I, 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 or since a, Trump was elected? No, no, it started with Obama. So Obama. Started Obama. With Obama. It started with Obama because it was a backlash um, against a black man achieving um, the highest power. I've seen. I'm not saying it start. It's only started. There's black, pe- black people have been oppressed ever since they've been enslaved. I'm not saying it just there, but the news reports have become even more prominent. Yes. And even north of the border uh, of these incidents happening, uh, where uh, one guy was stopped, uh, stopped for uh, uh, taillight. He was a legal card-carrying gun owner. He was not a criminal. He was shot in a car after he told the cops, I'm, I have a gun on me. I have a permit. And instantly the scenario escalated. Who and the ma- it was uh, It was some guy uh, in the States. He was a... It was a Legally carry. He had a gun. Told the officer, "I have a gun in the glove. I have a gun on me." He was, uh, you know, he was in a he was in a he was in a carry for open carry state. Open carry state, all right. And he told the cop, and and there was no way that I don't know what uh, there was no way they could deescalate it, and the go, the cop shot him in the car. And that every Republican gun loving uh, 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 politician, what did they say? Guy shouldn't have had a gun. And clearly, it was you know every other instance they 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 believed the gun, but when the black man had a gun, he shouldn't have had a gun. Clearly, he brought it on himself. And this is the kind of thing black people have to deal with every fucking day, you know. And so if 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 uh, you know, I I don't I'm not afraid at a traffic. I've been pulled over for speeding and 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 traffic. I have never had to worry. That I was going to go to prison or be shot in my car, you know, and, and to think that someone has to worry over the most minor detail that their whole life is going to be fucking derailed. That's why I. That, that's why zero bias uh, is, is a target we need to strive for because no one should ever be afraid for for stupidity that they're gonna that their life is going to be ruined or that their kid is not going to come home one day. Are you projecting stuff that's happening in the U.S. over here, though? Because I don't think we have it's that not, level of racism. Not, it's not has. happening at the same frequency, but it happens. Yeah, I mean, if it happens... It does happen. Well, the, the whole point of Black all. Lives Matter's T.O., the guy got pulled over in traffic stop. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, when they say Black Lives Matter, they're not, they're not saying that Black Lives Matter more than everybody. They're saying Black Lives Matter too. No, Hence, no. Yes, that, that, Go that, to the that, website, read it. They are unapologetically saying that the black lives are first among equals. They are saying that their organization is for black 
lives. They're not yes, out. They're, they're not out for anyone else, and they don't want their hashtag appropriated by any other group. So no, don't I totally agree with you. That, that, but that's why because that's false. It's it's not the sentiment. That's what that the sentiment okay. is still there because they've been treated like they don't matter. That's that's okay. much different that, than what you said before. Oh, I agree with that. All right, I agree. That's why. I mean, when they they say. They, they put in themselves. That, that means that they're speaking up for themselves first and foremost. They're not advocating that anyone else is lesser than black people. They're saying that's why all lives matter derails that because the people who say all lives matter don't behave like all lives matter. They say that to shut down the conversation, and because they actually don't give a shit about black lives. You know, the, the, the black lives matter. They're trying to stand up for themselves saying, we matter as well. Because we are being treated like our lives do not matter. And that's what they're trying to say. They're not advocating any kind of hatred. They, they have a hatred for the police because of mistreatment. But they're not advocating racial hatred. Thank you, JR. Thank you. Um, it's time to... Wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go around the table for some closing words. We're going to start with JR on this one. All right. Okay. The passion. Um, JR. All right. And, uh, one, one, one other thing that people, another pride parade that no one knows, the St. Patrick's Day parade is a pride parade. It's Irish pride. Because once upon a time... Hold I, on a second. I, Irish people... In The Simpsons... Final thoughts. I specifically uh, heard that... <laughs> No one that the 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 Everyone gays is Irish. And the, uh, the gays <laughs> and the Italians don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. No. Okay. Uh, originally, Go ahead. Go ahead. it was it is a it was, it was a pro Irish pride parade. It's essentially what they're trying to say. Because once upon a time, Irish were the lowest caste of white people. Sure. You know, um, especially if they were Catholic. Except especially if they were Catholic, but even in general, Britain within Great Britain, Irish people were. Under the shoes. Mm -hmm. So this was white people hating white people. Mm -hmm. And and they got treated like shit. What chance did black people have if even if even white people weren't all at the same level? So um, they're not the first pride parade. You know, it is the, 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 the things have different names, but, but other pride parades, because once upon a time, being Irish was worse than being dead. You know, so any any kind of ra racism in any form is unacceptable. And your final thoughts on pride and the police? The police need to do better to work through their unbiased towards all groups. Because, yes, it is an inclusive group. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean everybody gets to fly their, pl their flag at pride. A lot of men's rights advo advocates, uh, anyone who really is advocating hate... <coughs> Uh, some sort of some sort of hate is not welcome in pride, and unfortunately, the police still advocate their own brand of bias and bigotry, and that that's not inclusive. Mm -hmm. They don't treat everybody equally. Why are they being celebrated in a in a in a parade that celebrates equal treatment towards everybody? I mean, they're clearly their track record has not demonstrated this. You know, yes, they made amends with, with 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 gay people, maybe because it was popular, maybe it was to whitewash or pink wash their uh, or rainbow wash. Sorry, rainbow wash their image. Any other any other metaphors you want? I'm to sorry, I, I was cycling through that. I think <laughs> rainbow wash would be the proper. Uh, uh, pink washing is for uh, breast cancer, but uh, rainbow washing their image. But you know, you've you, you're not treating everybody the same. I don't know why you think you need to be celebrated just because you are. I, you don't get a cookie. For acting at the expected level, that that's basically mm -hmm. thing. You know, you, you that that that's what it comes to. You have to behave so, li like a human being and treat everybody equally. So and they're not doing it. Leave them out. I think and not until they yeah until, until they, they clean until, up until they clean up their act towards everybody. Yeah, I, I don't think they've earned their position at the table. Thank you, Gino. Uh, so um, police are still going to be at the pride parade. Just not in uniform. They no. They are no. the ones providing security, security for the parade. Yeah, but they're being, they're being paid. They're being hired for security. So police are still part of the day. Yeah. They are providing the security to make sure that the event goes off in a fashion where there is not total bedlam. Yes. They are providing security. Yes. 
the reason that and the way going back to something that Big V mentioned earlier as to how this decision was made, uh, Black Lives Matter Toronto attended the annual general meeting mm. of the Pride Parade. Yep. They got this item on the agenda. Mm-hmm. This item was actually, actually... You kind of forced it on the agenda. No, this item was actually left off of the agenda, and it was one member of Pride Toronto that actually noticed it was left off and worked to get it put on the agenda. And that lady is a white lesbian who noticed that this item was left off and put it back on the agenda. This item, when it was voted on by a non-profit organization, the motion was carried. Black Lives Matter was not able to impose this decision on anyone. But what they did do was they affected change from the outside, from sympathizers who were on the inside at that annual general meeting of Pride Toronto and voting on the topic. Now, there's no public record of who voted for this motion. That was destroyed by Pride Toronto. I would have loved to see who actually voted for this motion. But that record is gone. So if the Pride organizers, if the members of the Pride Toronto annual general meeting want to erase this black mark from their history because that's what it is excluding the police is a black mark in the history of the pride parade they need to overturn this resolution at the next annual general meeting if they don't the blame does not go to black lives matter the blame goes to the people at the pride parade because really it was two dozen protesters who halted the entire parade. It was a celebration of a million people, and two dozen people managed to get this item noticed. As JR was saying, they staged a protest that got noticed. They didn't clean up after the parade. They staged a protest, and they were not able to be moved. So two dozen people stood up for what they believed in, they got this item on the agenda, and they went and got this motion passed. So if this exclusion of the police is the true face of pride toronto then they should wear that face with pride instead of blaming a fringe group like black lives matters toronto thank you gino marco any part final words um i guess i worry about how the majority of police who don't have these kind of biases respond to being excluded from the parade. If you were a gay police officer or lesbian police officer, whatever the case may be, and you participated in parades in the past, would you go down and participate now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I Definitely d- not in uniform. I, I, That's for sure. Not in uniform, no. no I, I might not, right? But, I mean, if I was a straight, honest hard-working police officer that never mistreated anybody because they were black and now all of a sudden I'm being vilified by this group, I feel like shit. If, if you can't see the sins your group commits just because you don't commit them, then you're not opening your eyes. All right? If you're in a group and okay, these guys are going, well... Yeah, those those guys have been jerks. I can see why they don't want us. You know, you know, the, uh, you know you, 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 these guys, the, the cops do hear do know of some of this stuff. You know, they they're a very strong union. They don't a lot of people are not encouraged to speak up. That's why there's not a lot of police whistleblowers. Are you saying that you know the inner workings of the police protocol better than the people who work for the Toronto Police? No, like I think no. he's right. I imagine Thank I mean, you. imagine police will stick together. Stick ge- police generally right. stick together you know, because. And in, in, in different, in, in, it's it's in some ways it is understandable. You you know, in some these people are faced with life or death. It's a benefit and, and to you, the job. To and you need together, to trust right? the person next to you. Unfortunately, with that trust comes turning a blind eye, hmm. and not being able to speak up, lest when you need help, maybe someone might not show up. Who knows? Are you saying what? Are you saying Serpico was a documentary? I've got no clue what you're fucking okay. talking about. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't Serpico? Worry about it. Don't worry. You've never seen you Al Pacino. No, no, never no seen I haven't Serpico? seen it. Thank Check you, it Marco. Al Pacino. Check it out. G- um, Big V, close it off for me, please. 
Um, I really don't have uh, any more comments uh, with regards to this other than the comments uh, that I had made, I guess, at the beginning. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. Thank you, Big V. And I want to thank all our listeners here uh, for joining us on another episode of the Crew Roundtable. Dada, you, I know. You, you never say nothing. Oh. Do you, do, uh, I don't say the central question, away from you. do you agree with the decision to exclude uh, police I, from Pride Toronto? I've learned a lot today from JR saying sins of the police have to look at themselves as a group of what they've done from from uh, you, uh, Gino, you know, excluding the police. It's... Uh, what am I going to say? I'm, a, I'm, on, I'm in the middle. Um, once it's, again, it's not I'm an easy decision. decision. It's not. It's not an easy it's decision. It's not. But it's, uh, it's, I, it's, it's not. Oh, I don't want to use that that phrase. But it's not. It's not a cut and dry decision. <laughs> what phrase? Yeah, I'm not going there. Please what phrase? Please don't say it. Were, were you going to say black and white? <laughs> yes. Please don't. Say it. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap it up. Get us out of here quick before we say something bad. I know. We got to move. Okay. Uh, catch uh, catch our podcast. Uh, catch our uh, visit our website crewroundtable.com. Visit our, uh, download our podcast at uh, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher Radio. There was another place where you can download, but it's not coming to me. Google Play Music. <laughs> I already said oh, Google yeah, Play. Okay. <laughs> I think you're drunk more than me. Oh, well. But thanks for listening. If you have a, sh- um, a suggestion, topic. a topic, please uh, tweet us at, at Crew Roundtable. Use the hashtag Ask the Crew. We're there 24 hours a day, always listening. And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Ciao for now.